Chapter 10. The Gauntlet. They're closing the gap, ma'am, Bernelli whispered hoarsely. It's as though louder noise would somehow shatter a fragile moment and bring the slowly approaching Zerg crashing down on them. Brienne's voice was cold and level. Hold your fire, damn it. They're cutting us off, lieutenant. Shut up, Malish, Brienne snapped. Peaches, can't you get this thing started? What remained of the detail was ever so slowly pulling in tighter and tighter around where Ardo stood. The purplish wall of Zerg, their faces locked in a hideous metallic grin, clawed at the air anxious in anticipation of their prey. Ardo thought suddenly of the cat his mother had barely tolerated to wander about the farm. One afternoon, Ardo had watched in fascinated horror as the otherwise sweet creature had cornered a mouse in the barnyard and played with the trapped prey as though it were a toy. Eventually, the cat had clamped his jaws down on the hapless critter's skull and ended the chase in a bloody dirty meal. Yet before that happened, Ardo seemed to recall a similar smile on the face of that cat. And now here he was, the mouse. The vulture suddenly whined back to life. Ardo could see the sweat breaking out on Peaches as he nervously primed the forward ordnance. Brienne's voice rose slightly in pitch. Perhaps she was looking at the same thief as Ardo was considering. I don't have all day, Prive. I've got it, Lieutenant. Peaches chattered back. We're good to go. Very well. Brienne turned slowly, her voice rising over the whine of the vulture cycles. Every unlocked and loaded? Peaches and Wyndham. Make me a hole, now! The vultures screamed and lurched forwards as their riders opened their accelerators clear to the stops. Bolts thundered from their forward projectors and exploded against the Zerg line even as they approached it. The Zerg screamed too, their own terrible voices rising in indignation that their prize would have the effrontery to challenge them. Now, Marines! Brienne screamed. The encroaching outer circle of Zerg suddenly lurched inward, collapsing towards their prey. Their claws whipped through the air intent on shredding armor, draining blood and stripping flesh from bones. Yet the Marines were no longer there. As one, they rushed towards the line of explosions before them, the billowing orange conflagration growing by the second. Their weapons trained forward in unison, a solid column of flame and death burning and blasting through the deep column of the enraged Zerg. Don't look back, run, you bastards, run! Ardo ran next to Littlefield, the metal case banging between them. His free hand held the Gauss rifle, swinging wildly as it spewed destruction indiscriminately in his path. There was no effort to fire for effect. There was no effort to fire for effect. All he could do as he ran was random damage to add to the carnage already taking place. They were already at the wall of fire they had created. Several zerg limbs and burning viscous fluid cascaded around them. Keep firing! Keep running! Ardo caught a glimpse of Cotter off to his left. The huge fire bat thundered forward, the female civilian draped over his shoulder. She bounced with each step like a rag doll. With his free hand, Cotter poured plasma into the zerg line. The flames wrapped around Ardo as he crossed the line. The footing had already gotten difficult. The ground slick with charred and ruptured zerg organs. The metal box banged against his leg, letting him know that Littlefield was still there, running and pulling him forward. An unearthly scream tore across the comm channel. It continued, an ear-piercing squeal of terror. Essen! Jeez, Lieutenant, they're all over him! We gotta... Keep running, Collins! That's an order! But, Lieutenant, can't you hear him? Run, damn you! Don't look back! The internal temperature of Ardo's battle armor was growing by the moment. He could feel his hands and feet starting to blister. Suddenly, he ran directly into a standing zergling. Ardo screamed, but he did not stop, knocking the creature down in his rush before both vanished from each other's sight amid the conflagration. He was shocked when, in the next instant, the flame was gone from his smoking faceplate. Before him lay the long expanse of the southern basin, Mala's nipple, the stone wall peaks. All he had to do was... The chatter of automatic fire rattled across the comm channel. They're coming! They're nipping at my ass! Oh, gods of... A scream drove like a needle into Ardo's ear. Before it died, two more joined it, each unique in its death sound. Keep running, you dogs! Brienne breathed through the comm channel. Her own voice had an edge to it Ardo had never heard before. Was she winded or just afraid? Keep running and don't look back! Instinctively, Ardo looked. The Zerg were closer than he thought, and more numerous than he imagined. To either side of them stretched the carpet of the aliens pulling across the landscape, streaming towards him. 
Ardo stumbled at the sight. Littlefield, maintaining a death grip on the case slung between them, shot ahead. Only his companion's pull on the box kept Ardo on his feet and moving forward. Do that again, kid, Littlefield huffed between breaths, and I'll leave you behind. They were covering open ground now, their battle armor once more carrying them with incredible speed towards the steep incline of the basin wall. Ardo briefly remembered how much fun he had crossing this same ground and coming down that incline just a few hours ago. Or was it months ago? In the open, they were widening the distance between themselves and the zerg between them. Now he was faced with having to run up that sheer face. Ardo realized with a start that the vertical face would slow down his battle armor considerably, but it would not hinder the enraged zerg pursuing him. Sarge! Ardo huffed. My weapon's dry. I need to reload. Drop it, soldier, Littlefield chuckled with a dry throat. Sir? Drop your weapon! Littlefield was a strong warrior, but even his training was being taxed by the full outrun. His words were gasping out over his breath. It doesn't matter anymore, son. But, sir, do you... Do you know what's... What's on top of that cliff right there? There's a bunk and a hot meal waiting for me, for you. It's sitting sitting just inside the most beautiful confederacy perimeter wall you've ever seen. Auto, auto defense cannon turrets, bunkers, prettiest bunkers you've, you've ever seen, full of fresh soldiers who really want to play shooting gallery at the wall of angry zergs. Ardo looked at the top of the cliff face again. He could almost see the walls of their base at Senek. It seemed to be a million steps from where he so desperately continued to run. Drop your gun, son, Littlefield croaked. If we don't clear the rim of this basin, no amount of ammo in that fine weapon of yours will save your ass, or mine. Ardo glanced at Littlefield. The old warrior smiled at him through his panting breath. Ardo noticed for the first time that Littlefield had already dropped his weapon and ammunition packs. Ardo tossed his gun aside, put his head down and ran. The floor of the basin began to rise in front of them. The relatively smooth floor was giving way to the more uneven terrain leading to the base of the rim wall. Ardo frantically scrambled across the ever steeper ground, his feet propelling loose rocks behind him from time to time. The climb was getting worse with each step. The stone face of the wall rose above them. The battle armor was powered for many things, but flight was not one of them. He stumbled onto the access road. It crossed back and forth along the cliff's face, a series of switch blades leading up to Senek. It was the only way up to the cliff. Ardo risked another glance back. The marines had put a hundred yards between them and the following zerg. It would not be enough. The marines would have to navigate the switchbacks, but Ardo could already see that the zerg were under no such restraint. The bug-like creatures scrambled and leapt over the intervening rocks with barely any check. They would come straight up the cliff face. Someone else noticed it too. Marines, prepare to hold and fire. Lieutenant Brienne. She was going to stop and make her stand. Melnikov, Littlefield, get that case back to base. Cutter, follow them in with that civilian. That's the mission. The rest of us hold here as long as we can. Maybe it will be enough. Holy shit. Shut up, Collins. That line of rocks at the edge of the roadway. Everybody take up a position and prepare to fire. Brienne's voice was like steel. She had made up her mind, and nothing and no one could change it now. The squad, breathless and aching, dashed to the group of protruding boulders lining the side of the road like broken teeth. The zerg swarm swept over them. Littlefield, get out of here now or I'll... A bright tone suddenly in Ardo's helmet. By the sudden reaction from the remaining platoon members, they all heard it too. Ardo, looking at Brienne's face all the time, saw her eyes go wide. She looked up. Ardo followed her gaze and caught a glimpse of a brilliant arching contrail etching herself across the bright sky. Turtle down, marines, now! The lieutenant barked. Ardo, out of trained reflex more than thought, tossed himself to the ground behind the nearest boulder. He closed his eyes, but to little effect. The world suddenly went painfully white. He could feel the concussion through the ground a moment afterward. He had experienced this many times before, but there was still something about being under such primal, unquestioning power that shook him to the soul. It was coming, the great beast, and the shaking ground only heralded its approach. The shockwave from the tactical nuclear blast had compressed the air in front of it into a wall of force. Distance had dissipated its effect, 
but it was nevertheless deadly, passed over Ardo and his battle suit, shaking him through the armor until he thought his teeth would be dislodged. It would only be a moment, he knew. Either way, it would only be a moment. And then the moment passed, and he was still there. Ardo staggered to his feet. The outpost that had been Oasis was hidden beneath the roiling red cloud. Probably was the roiling red cloud, Ardo realized. The line of Zerg had not had any warning. Most were dead from the shockwave. Those few who remained seemed either confused or blind from the flash. This certainly was no time to question which. Move it, Marines! Brienne whooped. Let's get home before these Zerg pigs figure out what happened. Ardo grabbed the handle of the battered metal case and turned, grinning towards Sergeant Littlefield. That was one amazing rescue, eh, Sarge? Is that what that was? To Ardo's astonishment, Littlefield's face was grim. Let's get this box home. I need a shower in my bunk.